that um, our Lord Jesus Christ privately tells St. Peter and James and John and Andrew of the final signs. He talks about wars and earthquakes and famines and sorrows and persecutions. He talks about preaching the gospel and all these kind of things. And, you know, the end of the Coptic year, um, the church reminds us of the end of the world and the end of our lives. And so the question might be, why, why this focus? Why does the church spend time on this every single year? Why do we evaluate on this? Well, it's important. It's important for us to, you know, make this a daily practice. At the end of each day, it's important for us to evaluate our day so that we can prepare for the next. In the same way that we prepare, we evaluate our weeks, we evaluate our months, so we should also evaluate our years. And we reflect, how did this year go? I know it's kind of a, a weird thing for me to talk about this year in 2020, um, and like it's a disaster. But, you know, personally, how is, what is my relationship with Christ during this year? And, and so this, this reminder, this constant reminder of the second coming and the end of times reminds us um, to take our lives very seriously um, in the gospel. And I don't know if you, you were able to read all the readings of this morning, but from the Catholic epistle from St. James, he writes, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we shall live and do this or that. And so for the Orthodox Church, preaching the end of times um, actually begins or began with St. John the Baptist, who cried out to the people, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And so our Lord Jesus Christ took that same message when he began his public ministry um, after the beheading of St. John the Baptist. And throughout his public ministry, our Lord Jesus Christ constantly preached this, the, the coming of his kingdom. And so the discussion of the second, the second coming in the Orthodox Church is never used as a fear tactic um, that would maybe interfere with someone's free will. No, we believe as Orthodox Christians that we are in fact living in the end of times. But we also remember what our Lord Jesus Christ said, not yet. And so many prophecies must be fulfilled before the end. Uh, for instance, in the book of Daniel, uh, we read in the final chapter that knowledge will greatly increase Okay, I mean, we're already witnessing, you know, the internet age, right? The, the websites and the, the information explosion with instantaneous communications all over the globe. And Daniel, Daniel the prophet speaks of this as, you know, perhaps one of the final uh, events before the end. And so the question is, what is the end, right? In Christian terms, the end is Christ himself. And so we can also say that the end is another word for the manifestation of the kingdom of God. Our Lord Jesus Christ himself is described in Revelation as the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And this is an eternal description. And Christ describes the end as the kingdom of God coming in power. And Christ, as Christ goes about his ministry, proclaiming the coming of the kingdom, and the end is, is present in his very word and his actions. One thing that I love about the, the Coptic Church is that in the church, in the church rites, <clears throat> in the church rites, um, every vespers, every liturgy that we have on a Saturday morning, um, we always pray the prayer of the departed. Um, each time that we pray uh, to the re repose the souls of the departed, we add, as for us, grant us the Christian perfection that we're pleasing unto you and give us a share in inheritance with all your saints. We say in the liturgy, there is no death for your servants, but a departure. Just moving from one world to the next, as the Israelites did from Egypt to Israel. Their, their journey took an entire lifetime. But God was with all of them each day in several ways. Um, in the church, we have the midnight prayer. Uh, and we have the three watches that focus on the second coming so that we can be ready. In the liturgy, we, we often hear the words, let us attend. Do we know why we say let us attend? It means pay attention. It means focus. It means pray from your heart with concentration. It means wake up. Um, something important is about to happen. Why? Because the focus on death teaches us how to live. And it leads us to repentance. Um, you know, I heard one of the fathers say at a funeral, during his sermon, he said, he opened with the, the idea that 
um, the sermon during the funeral is one of the most important sermons that we can have in, in the church rites. Why? Because most people are thinking about their own mortality and their heart is very vulnerable. And so um, it reminds us of, of how, uh, how short this life is. And this remembrance of, of the temporary nature of our lives prepares us to meet God. And it helps us to overcome the natural fear of death. And we focus on the power of the resurrection. Uh, and it leads us to think of the heavenly things and the greatness of God. And so today I wanted to focus on a couple of things. I wanted to focus on a little bit of the signs before the second coming, but then I also want to focus on another aspect. Um, many of the signs are happening and they've been happening for years. Uh, wars, uh, rumors of wars, earthquakes, famine, pestilence, the spreading of the gospel, uh, the Jews believing, false teachers, persecutions, the weakening of faith. Um, the weakening of faith. It, this is the idea of um, a low interest in God and worship. That, like the flame or the zeal and love has diminished. Um, there's, in other words, there's a bigger interest in sin, which puts out, puts out the fire and the zeal and the love. Um, we see that our Lord's teachings will be neglected and ridiculed and everything that's related to Christianity, uh, its customs and traditions, um, the church hymns and the music, the, the feast days, it'll be considered ancient history. Um, again, these are just some of the signs. And so maybe therefore, instead of worrying about whether we're living in the end of times, um, uh, maybe we should listen to our Lord when he says, simply be ready. This is verse 37 of today's gospel. Be vigilant, be prepared. He says, and what I say to you, I say to all, I say watch. Okay, so we can't always predict all the signs of what's going to happen before the second coming, but what we have control over is just this, to be ready, to be vigilant, to be prepared, to watch. So whether we hear of um, unprecedented hurricanes. It, it shouldn't really matter. Um, none of us knows when the end of our lives will come. Um, our end may come today. It may come tomorrow. It may come unexpectedly. It may come in an accident. It may come with an illness. It may come in some other way. All we have to care about and all we have to be ready for is, is to be prepared and to be ready always. Christ reminds us to live in this constant state of watchfulness. And our spiritual struggle is to live a life of this preparedness. And so the, question, the central question that we should think about when we think about this topic, we shouldn't really think about our, you know, are the end of times here? That's not that useful. But rather, are we ready to be prepared to face our creator? That's the more important question. Are we ready and prepared to face our creator today? Right? And so the other aspect of today I wanted to focus on is watchfulness. It's important for us to remain in a spirit of, of watchfulness. Watchfulness means to pray with attention. It means to guard our senses. It means that we are constantly um, watching our actions so that our heart is not snatched away by the devil. And it means that we watch our minds. We, it means that we meditate on the scriptures and that we await the second coming um, and we, we think about our own departures as we are ready to meet the bridegroom. Watchfulness requires discipline and self-control to be on guard and not to let ourselves be distracted with things of this world, but to watch, to pay attention. Um, we don't pray for an end to struggle and challenges, but no, we have to be vigilant. If, if the struggles and challenges go away, we can become lazy. Um, but as long as there is a struggle, we keep fighting and we can achieve victory in the end. And we pray that our Lord gives us patience in, in struggles and challenges that we're facing. The consequences of not being watchful are very serious. When our souls live carelessly without watching over our thoughts, it will be filled with unclean thoughts or, or um, uh, chaos in our minds. And so as a result, people will develop problems that eventually pile up. Some people, when they're found in this situation, they, and they come face to face with the problems itself, they don't realize it, 
and they're unable to humbly confess to the spiritual father at all in their falls. And so we have to be careful that we don't look for secular solutions to the problems that we're encountering. This is a big trap that we face into. It, it, it's like a, 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 a awful cycle that we fall into. We fall into sin, we get embarrassed, we don't, and then we let things pile up, and then we don't have the courage to say it out loud to our father in confession. And so it piles up even more and piles up even more, and then we get more embarrassed and we, we dig ourselves a deeper hole. And then we try to find solutions on our own. We try to read self-help books or we talk to a good friend of ours or, you know, we find a secular solution to the problem. But the, we don't realize that the only solution is to become aware of the problems that we're facing and confess it to a spiritual father. And we humbly accept uh, their advice. And, and we, we subject ourselves to the discipline and obedience of our spiritual fathers. In our days, uh, people have unfortunately lost, lost control over their lives. And, you know, the reason is um, they don't wish to be guided. And I'm not saying this to anybody that's listening to this sermon, right? I'm not saying, um, but it's a, it's a trap that people can fall into. People don't necessarily, are not comfortable um, being guided. They don't want to be a disciple. They want to live undisturbed, uh, just kind of leave me be. And they rather follow their own will, which can eventually lead to their own destruction. And so when man uses their freedom and independence without taking into consideration human weaknesses, uh, they can become deceived. And so they experience, um, he experiences and interprets everything using their own logic. Instead of God's grace, uh, human logic rules and his mind will fall into confusion. And so it's essential to build self-control. Um, most importantly, we have to learn to harness the actions of our minds, which, which tends to run wild and if, if left unchecked. And this is what it means to be, uh, to be watchful. It, being watchful means that we have the necessary self-discipline um, and we're able to guard our inner hearts, our inner sanctuary, from being invaded by those thoughts that are stimulated by our senses and sinful actions. Our Lord says, watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. And so my advice to everyone is, is don't chase after signs, but put the signs in the proper perspective. The signs will be evident when they come to us, and Christ gave us the example of the fig tree to illustrate that we would know when the time is near. You'll hear rumors, right? Ignore them. You will hear about disasters. Disasters will come on us. I mean, we're living in a pandemic, right? Accept it and, and accept the complete trust in God. Focus on the one thing that's needful, right? That's needful for our salvation. And so we keep watch over our senses, we keep watch over our actions. We keep watch over our heart. And that's why when someone asks me, especially lately, are we living in the end of days? I say yes. And I say, just get ready. You know, and what I mean is like, I don't mean that the apocalypse is on us, right? It may, it may come. I don't know. It may come today. It may come tomorrow. Um, it may come in a thousand years. That's for God to know alone, right? Our Lord did warn us to wake us, to get ready to be prepared um, because our own end is coming soon enough. And so um, it's been said like, as lightning flashes in the sky, so will our end come to. Again, St. James said, isn't our life like a vapor? And so the sad and amazing reality is that many will still choose to ignore the warnings. Um, we have to be careful in the book of Revelation it offers a word of encouragement to followers who um, followed Christ, who felt that uh, they were living in the end of times. Let me read this. But humankind, this is in Revelation chapter 9, uh, verses 20 and 21. But humankind, who were not killed by these plagues, did not repent. They did not repent of the works of their hands. They did not repent of their murders and sorceries and sexual immorality or corruption. So, it's a big warning. We have to repent. <clears throat> the ultimate question is that, that we should reflect on during these, you know, the end of the, the Coptic year is, is it, it not, is, it shouldn't be necessarily 
um, whether natural disasters and wars and troubles that we read about in the news are signs of the end of the world. They can or can't be, it may be. The crucial question is how will these natural disasters and how will these wars and troubles help change our lives? Will they lead us to a deeper repentance turning to God? You know, will they even affect our lives in any visible way? Or are we just gonna live life and watch Netflix as if nothing is going on around us? You know, so just a few last thoughts. In the midst of some hurricane or some earthquake or some fire or some nuclear threat or some pandemic, will we keep living like we always have lived? You know, what Christ revealed in Revelation was that those who survived the horrible plagues and disasters, they did not repent. They received warnings, but their lives didn't change. They didn't turn back to God. And they didn't focus on what was eternal. The temporary and superficial ways of life um, occupy, uh, and we cannot fall into the same trap. Is that how we will respond to the latest disaster? Will we change our lives and turn more to God? Will we strive to allow the Holy Spirit to dwell richly within us and guide us each and every day? Um, here's, the, here's the blessing. Here's the promise. It comes from Revelation chapter 21. If we live a life of continual repentance, always turning towards God, then we will hear Christ say, as he said in the book of Revelation chapter 21, and I'll end here, I will wipe away every tear from your eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Behold, I make all things new. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give the water of life freely to everyone who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be their God and they shall be my children. An amazing promise and something that we should really reflect on for the end of times. And glory be to God forever. Amen. And so let me...